Hi everyone, welcome to How to Electronics. In this project, we will build an IoT enabled smart fridge with ESP8266 microcontroller and multiple DS18V20 temperature sensors. The IoT enabled smart fridge or refrigerators are intelligent appliances that offer temperature optimization, diagnostics, and data collection features. This can maximize food storage and reduce production deterioration. This is the piece of hardware that we'll be using in this project. The PCB is compact and has all the SMD components like registers, capacitors, BMS IC, and low power voltage regulators. The device is powered by a single cell lithium ion battery. Due to its tiny size, it can be put anywhere and requires very compact space. Regarding the data observation parts, the ESP8266 connects to a Wi-Fi network and generates a web page. The web page can be accessed from any web browser. The web page displays the value of battery voltage, battery percentage, freeze temperature and freezer temperature. The web page is ajax based, hence data is updated without refreshing the web page. So let's get started and find out more about this project. Let us take a look at the design part of the project. Starting from here, it has a micro USB port for battery charging. The battery charging is managed by this IC called MCP73831. This LED indicates battery charging. The 3.7 volt lithium ion battery can be connected here. This is a slide switch to turn on and off the entire circuit. Then we have a low power LDO called ST7333 from Holtec. This supplies 3.3 volt power to the entire system. The voltage divided network register used here is to feed the ESP8266 ADC pin. This pin calculates the battery voltage. Then we have ESP8266 RAW chip which controls the entire operations. Using these header pins, we can program the RAW ESP8266 chip using a FTTI module. Two DS18B20 temperature sensors can be connected here. This OLED display is also optional in case if you don't want to use the Wi-Fi feature. After designing the schematic, I converted the schematic to a custom PCB. The PCB is very thin and the components needed to be soldered on both the sides. I made some design mistakes in my PCB part but the design part has been updated here. This is the 3D view of the PCB. The PCB looks awesome. Now I have generated the Gerber file and it's time to order the PCB. So I visited PCB GoGo which is the official sponsor of this video. You can get the trial PCB from here at only $1. It is very cheap compared to all other PCB manufacturers. I uploaded a Gerber file and filled in the details like material type, dimensions, quantity, thickness, shoulder mask color and other required parameters. And then I clicked on a quote now. Here you can see the price is only $1. Now I selected my country of shipment and placed the order. Now after 5 days, I received this PCB. Look at the PCB quality. It's very very premium and has a perfect design for my project. If you want to order the PCB at $1, check the first link in the description. I then soldered all the SMD components on the PCB board. I used solder paste and my hot air gun along with the microscope to solder all the components on the board. The board looks awesome and perfect for the project as I have soldered everything perfectly. After soldering is done, connect the 3.7 volt lithium ion battery to the battery port. Then slide the switch. The blue LED on the board will blink. This indicates the board is working fine. 
In order to upload the code and establish serial communication with the computer, connect the FTDI module to this board. Let's see the code part now. This code sets up a smart fridge using a ESP8266 microcontroller. It's connected to the Wi-Fi networks, reads temperature from two DS18B20 temperature sensors and monitors battery voltage to calculate the battery percentage. The microcontroller hosts a web server that displays the battery voltage, battery percentage and the temperature of the fridge and freezer on the stylist web page. It also provides an API endpoint that returns the data in JSON format. The web page automatically updates the displayed data after 2 seconds by fetching the latest reading from the microcontroller. This code includes error handling for data fetching and uses animations for visually appealing presentation of the sensor data on the web page. Before uploading the code, add the large temperature library and one wire library to the Arduino library folder. From the board manager, select generic ESP8266 board and the COM port. Then hit the upload button to upload the code. After uploading the code to the ESP8266 board, the ESP8266 will connect to the Wi-Fi network and start a web server. To observe the IP address, open the serial monitor. The serial monitor will also display the value of battery voltage, battery percentage, freeze temperature as well as freezer temperature. Copy the IP address from the serial monitor and paste it on any web browser connected to the same network. Once you hit enter, a beautiful web page will be displayed. The web page shows four main pieces of data. Battery voltage, battery percentage, freeze temperature and freezer temperature. Each piece of data is displayed in its own card-like element. Since the project is designed to monitor the refrigerator temperature, so we need to place it inside the fridge and freezer. Therefore, place one of the sensor in the fridge and the other sensor inside the freezer. Do not put your device and battery inside the freezer as battery behaves abnormally under minus temperature. Now check the temperature on the web page. Now you will see the massive change in temperature of the freezer. It will show the temperature in negative as shown here. It's almost like minus 5 or minus 6. This is how you can monitor the real time battery voltage and temperature of your device. Anyway, that's all from the video part today. The complete details of this project including the bill of materials, schematics, Gerber file, how the project works and source code can be found in How to Electronics website article. Please go through the link in the description and read it in case you want to clear your concept. In case you have any doubt, comment down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.